The first week of February just sucked. First, we lost Maurice White, one of the founders and chief promoters of Earth, Wind, and Fire, my go-to R&B sound of the 70s. Mr. White had struggled with Parkinson's disease for several decades and finally succumbed February 2nd. He was 74 years old. Then we heard of the death of Bob Elliott. Who, you ask? Bob Elliott was the Bob of Bob and Ray, a comedy duo whose work spanned five decades, starting in the 50s. Elliott and his partner Ray Goulding were probably more prolific than Abbott and Costello. They did radio, TV, live theater with a style that poked fun at themselves and the media in which they worked. I literally grew up on Bob and Ray. You can still find a lot of their work on the internet. I found and laughed at several since this news hit. Elliot was 92. Then there was the shocker. X Games BMX champion Dave Mira, dead of apparent suicide just two months shy of his 42nd birthday. Now, I first met Mira when he was courted by the U.S. Subaru factory rally team to see if his BMX extreme style bicycle skills could transfer over to a successful rally racing endeavor. Several years earlier, the rally world had successfully seduced Travis Pastrana, an extreme sports motorcycle trickster, to the sport. For a myriad of reasons, not the least of which are his record number of X Games medals, Mira seemed like another excellent choice. And he was. He jumped right into one of the Vermont sports car prepared Subaru STIs and attacked the roads with confidence and joy. And almost as much as his talent and application at the driving part, he endeared himself to all who rubbed shoulders with him and he would go out of his way to rub your shoulder. It's kind of the nature of the rally community. Nobody doesn't know everybody. There are no strangers. But Mira was a different sort. He just smiled at you and made you his friend. Now, Dave was as much an on-purpose person as anybody I have ever known. His whole life, he had set his sights on goals. Spins on the bike, starting his own bicycle manufacturing company, community service in his hometown of Greenville, North Carolina, breaking altitude records in the halfpipe, whatever it was, he would tackle it on purpose. So this last deed, I want to assume he also did on purpose. While others are asking why, I'm asking what was he trying to accomplish? I believe he had a reason. And one of the thoughts being offered is that Dave suffered from some form of depression. Now, I don't see depression as a reason on its own. I think depression warps reality sometimes so much that the data seems to point at only one more accomplishment. Depression is the misinterpreter of the facts. Another possibility is that due to his career path, he had suffered many, many injuries, and of those, many were head injuries. Recent research in the National Football League and other organizations about the effects of concussions, CTE, chronic traumatic encephalopathy... I've tied this type of injury to severe compromises in the later quality of life of athletes who regularly suffered these injuries professionally. Perhaps there's a clue here. Again, I believe Dave did what he did on purpose. It was a logical act to him at the time. The question for me is, what was his purpose? And why did he consider it important enough to carry out? We may never know. I'm just saddened to conclude that he had a reason to go and we won't see his smiling face and infectious attitude anymore. Yeah, the first week of February sucked. This too shall pass. It's Kim, and this is another moment of clarity.